Hi, I'm Andy from Camperent, and this is the Auto Roller 707. I'm going to take you on a tour of the vehicle, showing you everything inside and outside, so while you're on your holiday, you're comfortable with how everything works. All of our vehicles are fully sterilized and clean before every single hire, and everything inside is fully replenished and restocked. All of our vehicles come with two main keys. Your main ignition key, which does your two front doors, also your ignition, and it also opens many of the diesel caps. You also get your second key, that does your habitation door and all of your outside lockers. Some of our keys may have a third key. If you have a key like this, this is the key for your diesel cap. All of our vehicles run on diesel. You'll get a full tank of diesel when you leave us with for your hire, and all we ask is on your return, you return it full as well. The diesel filling point is located on the side of the vehicle here. Your main ignition key will be the key that opens that diesel filler cap. Insert your main ignition key, turn and the cap will release slowly. The key will remain in the cap while you're filling. That's so you don't uh, drive off without the cap being put back on. Put the cap back in, turn the key and close the flap. We then come to our LPG system. Every single one of our vehicles here has the gas low system fitted to it. What that means is, is that you can run your heating, your hot water, your fridge, your freezer, and your hobs, and your oven and your grill, all from the gas. To open your gas locker, simply insert your habitation key, turn the handle, and the locker will open. In here, you will find your gas canister, which we check regularly to ensure they are safe. This gauge shows how full the canister is. The gas should always be off whilst you are driving until you are fully parked up. When you're ready to use the gas, turn it on all the way round until it stops. To turn it off, simply turn it back the other way again until it stops. You've also got adapters, so if you're traveling in Europe and you need to fill your gas up, there's adapters here. Now the gas canister remains in the vehicle at all times. You don't need to take any gas canisters out anymore. The gas itself is very economical, so it won't cost you very much to fill up. It's about 15 pounds to fill a whole can up. And if you're out for about two weeks, I'd envisage that you'll probably use about seven or eight pounds worth of gas. So it's very, very economical. Close the hatch up, turn the handle, and lock it with your habitation key. Now to fill the gas up, there is a filling point down here. Turn the nozzle and that will release the cap. Most shell garages in the UK will have an LPG filling point. If you're in Europe, most service stations will have an LPG filling point. If you're struggling while you're out, there is a shell garage around the corner from us and they have really, really well stocked levels so you can fill in there before you return. When you do fill the, the LPG system up, all you do, get the pump, lock it onto the vehicle here, there's normally a handle, pull the handle over and lock it in place, go back over to your pump, hold the button down, that will zero the numbers, then they will start to scroll slowly. When it starts scrolling really slowly, that shows that your LPG tank is now full. Release the button, come back over to the pump, unlock the handle, when you remove it, it will make a noise like pshhh. It's completely normal, it's completely safe. It's just the pressure being released from where the gas has been pumped in. When the pump's back on its holder, refit the cap and you're ready to go. <music> Further down the vehicle, on this side, we have the grey water emptying point. We have the fresh water point. Further down here, we've got the main garage area. Again, using your habitation key. Insert the key, turn the key, these will pop out nice and simple, and your garage door will open. In the 707, it has large adult-sized bunk beds to the rear. This bu bottom bunk here can actually flip up inside to give you more access to this area, more storage space. Inside this area, you will find two ladders. Your 25 meter hookup cable, your warning triangle, if the worst was to happen, you were to break down, we have the health and safety box. So you've got two high visibility vests in here, some beam benders for traveling in Europe, two breathalyzers, which are essential for traveling in Europe. You've got a first aid kit and some fuses in there. We also supply you with a bucket, a dustpan and brush. You've got an airer. So if you've been to the beach or you've been swimming that day and you want somewhere to dry your clothes, please feel free to use this. You've got your toilet chemicals in here, your fresh water hose for filling up your fresh water. You've also got the silver screen. So when it becomes nighttime and you're ready to go to bed, all you need to do is take the silver screen out of here and suction it round to the front and passenger and driver side screens and then you're fully enclosed at night time. 
We'll close this up and move further around. To lock the garage up, simply take your habitation key, turn the handles, they'll suction back into the vehicle. Hold the handles in, turn them with the key, and they'll lock in place. If one pops out for any reason, just give it a little tap and that'll lock in place for you. So here we are at the rear of the 707. Every single one of our vehicles is fitted with a reversing camera. Also on the back of the vehicle are bike racks. So if you have hired a bike rack, what you'll have is the arms on the back here as well. There's a video about how the bike rack works a bit later on. On the opposite side of the vehicle, you have the second entrance to the garage area. This one, again, simply open using your habitation key. Turn the handles. And this one you're able to hook up using the handy stay. This is where we recommend you load all your equipment that you're bringing with you. Further along on this side of the vehicle, we have your toilet cassette. You've got your electric hookup point. Open the flap here and you can fit your electric cable nicely into this area here and the other end clips into the electric point on your campsite. Further up on the, on the side of the vehicle, we have your vent. Now this vent blows out and releases all the carbon monoxide that is created from inside the vehicle, which is keeping everybody else safe inside. So if you've got your heating on from your gas, this will blow out warm air. It's perfectly normal. It's venting all the bad air out of the vehicle. Using your central locking, you will see that there is plenty of room to get in and out of the vehicle. This is a bumper. This is not a step, this is part of the bumper of the vehicle. If you are a party with young children on, please make sure they don't stand on this. It does have a tendency to break. When you've got your ignition key ready, simply insert it into the ignition. Make sure your foot is on the brake. Turn the key forwards and the engine will start nicely. Now this is an automatic vehicle, but it's classed as a semi-auto. So whenever you're on a hill, you must use your handbrake, which is down to the right hand side. And when you pull away today, you'll be on a hill when you leave us, so this is a good test for you. Now, to make sure you put it into drive mode, make sure you have your foot on the brake, move it down and to the left, and you'll see on the screen, it says Auto 1. Auto 1 is what you want to drive, and it's the best way to drive. If you touch it to the left again, it will just say 1, and then you're in manual mode Tiptronic, so you can go up and down on the gears. Try and avoid that, always stay in Auto. When you want to reverse, simply move the gear stick to the right and pull it down. That will put you into reverse and it will also bring up your reversing screen on your main uh, camera here. That looks directly down the back of the vehicle. It doesn't open pan, so always have someone watching your back while you're doing reversing. When you've parked up, move the gear stick up into neutral. That's basically the park in these and always then make sure you put your handbrake on. Moving on around the rest of the vehicle, if you are unfortunate enough to have a breakdown or there's a hazard ahead, your hazards are here, so make sure you put your hazards on. The cab area itself has got full air conditioning. If you've got people in the back, you put it on nice and high, it will reach the people in the back as well. Most of our vehicles will come with uh, radio Bluetooth and some will have sat nav. Use the Bluetooth option to connect your phone, it's very easy to do. And if you want to uh, have your phone on, make sure you're doing it safely, make sure you connect it to the Bluetooth. The sat nav again, it's very, very useful, but please use common sense. If it looks like a field or a lane that you shouldn't go down in this type of vehicle, this size of vehicle, please avoid. Use common sense when using the sat-nav. There's also a handy USB point here for charging things like phones. We also supply the camper rent handbook. So there's also lots of helpful t hints and tips inside here about how to use all the equipment. So we always refer back to that as well as the video. <laughs> So this is your main habitation door. Using your habitation key, simply insert the key, turn it to the left. Place your thumb just underneath where you insert the key and gently squeeze the handle and that will open the habitation door. Once you've unlocked it, if you try and pull it, you'll notice that it doesn't open. You must, must put your thumb there and gently squeeze it and it will open nicely for you. Once the door is open, you'll be presented with the locking mechanism. So at night time, when it's bedtime and you want to get, get your head down and get some rest, flick that onto the red. That will lock the door from the inside. First thing in the morning when you want to exit the vehicle, please make sure that you flick it back onto green. Now, if you do open it on red, don't panic. It's designed to still open in case of an emergency, but where possible, please remember to open it on the green. The reason being is if you open it on red several times, it can damage the mechanism in here.
We're now inside the Autoroller 707. One of the main functions of the vehicle is this control panel up here. This one here is for your water pump. So if you want to run any taps, flush the toilet, have a shower, you must put this button on here. When you turn that button on, you will hear a slight rumble, but that will calm down once the water starts coming through. This is uh, an outside light, and that outside light is above your habitation door here. This is all your internal lights. You've got various light switches throughout the vehicle. You've also got blue LED running lights. But if you want to watch your television in your vehicle, you also need to have that light on because the television is wired through the same circuit as your lights. This one here is a temperature. It tells you what the temperature is inside the vehicle. It doesn't control any of your heating. It just, it's just a temperature guide. This one up here is your next important one. This is your water. This is your leisure battery. That will show you how much your leisure battery is charged. All of our vehicles have solar panels on the roof that charges the leisure battery and the leisure battery also charges from the engine battery when you're driving. The only way your vehicle will run out of charge is if you parked it in a cave and even then it will last anywhere between two and three days. Next one down is your engine battery. They've just added this in just so that you can tell that the engine battery is getting charged. Situated around the corner here underneath the telly you've got your main heating and hot water control panel. It's not just a handy clock, it also powers your heating and your hot water. This big dial in the middle, if you click the button, that brings on your main menu. So your first option here, this is for your heating. The one that's flashing, that's your heating, click onto that. Scroll to the temperature you want to set it at, for example, 18 degrees, click it. All you need to do then, scroll across to where your gas and the electric symbols are, click into there. If you're running everything off gas, just select gas, click it for gas. If you're running on electric on hookup, it's EL2. They're the only options you need, gas or EL2. Select EL2, click it, and then you'll be able to run your uh, heating through your electric. We're gonna select gas for now. Once you've selected your option, go to your fan, and you've got eco and high. If we put it on high, if it's rather chilly, the hot air will be pushed through the vehicle, through the vents, and it'll warm up here nice, nice and quickly. Put it on eco, you just want to take the chill out, it will, it will steadily put warmth through the vehicle. To get back to the main menu, press the back button and that will take you back to the clock. We're going to click back into here. We're going to move across to the next section, which is your hot water. So when it's flashing, click into it. You've got three options. You've got eco, hot and boost. If it's first thing in the morning, you want a nice hot shower, select boost, click it. Again, scroll across to your gas in your electric panel. Click the button again. If you're on gas, select gas, click gas. If you're running on electric on hookup, select EL2. We're gonna select gas again. Now that's selected, your hot water it will flash up here. When that goes solid, that will show that your hot water is ready to go. If you put it on boost, it will normally take around nine to 11 minutes and you'll have a nice hot shower. We're very safety conscious here at Camper Rent and the safety of our customers is paramount. So all of our vehicles have fire alarms fitted, and they also have carbon monoxide alarms fitted. If they do go off, they are very, very loud. You will hear them, so don't worry. Also, at the top here, next to the main RCD panel, is a Find It sticker. Now, the Find It sticker lets you know exactly where to locate your frost protection switch. So here we have the frost protection switch. When your frost protection switch has gone, that means your pipes and your tanks have emptied the water to stop them from freezing. What you need to do is find the blue button on the other side of this black box. It's a tiny circular blue button. Push that blue button in and that will reseal your tanks. If this blue diamond looking shape button on here has spun around the other way, so it's facing up and down rather than left and right, just turn that again so it's this way around. Again, press the blue button, it will reseal your tanks and you'll be able to fill your back water back up so you've got fresh water coming back through your taps. Your RCD unit trip switches and your gas isolation switches. When you collect the vehicle from us, your gas isolation switches will look like this. When you get to campsite and you wanna use your fridge on gas instead of electric, all you need to do is turn that handle there and that will produce gas into the fridge. When you select gas on the fridge, you can then run it using the LPG system. The RCD unit trip switches below here. If you're on your campsite and the campsite has a power cut for some reason, just go to the RCD unit trip switch and you'll see the switch which is moved across. All you've got to do is flick that back in place and you'll then have power back into your motorhome.
This is your water. So if you press it once, that's for your fresh water. Then when you leave us today, you will either have between 75 and 100% um, fresh water inside your vehicle. If you press it a second time, that's your grey water. So that shows that your grey water tank is currently empty. Now when you leave with us, it will either show zero as it does now, or 33% if we are on a slight slope. This indicates when you also need to empty your grey water. So when this is up to 100%, that's when you need to empty your grey water. This black handle here, to empty your grey water, all you need to do is simply pull this handle out to this point. There's a draining point under here that will release all your grey water from its tank. Your grey water is your washing up water, your shower water, so it's not really dirty water. Most campsites will have a designated area to do that, either on the pitch that you're on or somewhere on site, or you can empty it on a drain or a cattle grid on your journey. When it's emptied, simply push the grey lever back under and that will seal your tank. In here, we have the blue filling cap. Remove that. What you need to do is get your freshwater hose from outside of your garage area. There'll be a small green garden hose. Simply insert that into the hole here, fill it up, when the vehicle is dripping with water like this, that's how you know that your water tank is full. Get your blue filling cap, tighten it back up and close the flap and you're ready to go. As we move on into the kitchen area, what we've got is your main hobs. You've also got your oven and your grill area here. Got a grill selector and an oven selector and it has its own igniter. Also in your kitchen area, are your main cupboards. Now these are squeezy handles. If you squeeze them, they will open up. You've got your plates, your bowls, your mugs and everything and bits and pieces up there. Slowly close the cupboards. They'll click in place and they will lock so they don't open when you're driving. In terms of igniting your hob, all you need to do, get the handy igniter that we supply with you. Choose the, uh, the hob that you want to ignite. Make sure the gas is coming through and that hob will ignite nice and easy for you. Hold it in for a few seconds. Make sure it's all loaded. When you're finished, turn the hob off. Give it a few minutes before you put the glass back down. If you put it back down too quickly and you've had the hob on for a long time, it can crack the hob glass. Whenever you do any cooking, we recommend that you have this window open just to ventilate any fumes, any carbon monoxide that might be produced. So in this secret cupboard here, simply press that button and that will open it up. In here, you will find pots and pans, cooking utensils. There's a little secret drawer here, which is where all your cutlery and utensils are, bottle openers. And then down here, you've got your toaster and also your plastic beakers and wine glasses. When you close that cupboard back up, make sure you push the silver button in so it doesn't fly open while you're driving. So next we've got your fridge freezer. To power your fridge freezer on, simply hold this button down and the lights here will come on. They are quite faint, but you will be able to see them. They'll flash initially until you've selected the option that you want. Three options are gas, electric, or the engine battery. In order to change what you want to run your fridge on, hold the button down here in the middle, and it will flash purely on the item. Use the arrows to scroll along until you've selected what you want to run it on. So for example, the flame there is for your gas. Once you've chosen it, it will then stop to flash, click the button, and then you've got your temperature. Make sure it's on five bars initially. When you start to see the frosting appear inside, you can knock it down to four or even maybe three. Whenever you're driving in the vehicle, you must make sure that you select engine battery so that everything inside your fridge stays fresh and it holds it at the temperature that it's been chilled to. So we're now we're gonna enter the bathroom area of the vehicle. Hold down that handle and this will open up. So in here, you've got your toilet, your sink, and also your shower area. We've got some storage in here and some storage in the cupboard above up here as well. So you've got your wash basin here and your sink. I'm actually standing in the shower tray. The area I'm standing in has got a brown wooden base. When you do decide to have a shower, remove the base from the bottom, put it outside the vehicle, and then when you finish your shower, simply put the wooden base back in so that when someone else steps in here, they've got a nice dry floor, they're not stepping into a wet floor. The handle, or the tap, I should say, for the sink, will simply pull out 
and connect up to also make your shower head. If you want to put it back to a sink, simply feed the lead back through and it's back to a normal working tap. The toilet itself will swivel for comfort. On the back of the toilet there is a blue button. The blue button is the flush button. On the back of the toilet there is a small screen. When you leave us today that small screen will be green. That indicates that the toilet is clean and ready to go. As it's being used that screen will go red. When it's fully red that's telling you that it's time to empty your toilet cassette. Once it's emptied that screen will go back to green. When it comes to emptying your cassette you need to use this grey lever here to open and close the hatch of your toilet. So it moves from left to right. Once the uh, hatch is closed, you can safely remove your cassette outside. We have your toilet cassette. Simply press these two buttons and that will open your toilet cassette flap. Now inside on your toilet, there is a grey lever at the bottom. The grey lever moves left and right. That opens and closes the hatch to your toilet. Before you try and pull the toilet cassette out, please make sure that the hatch is fully closed. Squeeze the blue lever and the toilet cassette will release and come fully out. Take the cassette with you. There's normally a sanitation area or toilet block on campsites. Spin this pipe around here, unscrew the blue cap, pour your contents away. There's normally a wash facility, so you can rinse it all out, wash it out, disinfect it. Put the blue cap back on, turn the pipe round, and slide the cassette back in until you hear it click. That's how you know it's back in place properly. If you haven't made sure that the hatch inside the vehicle is closed, when you go to try and pull this, it will feel stiff. You'll still be able to pull it out, but you can damage the toilet. When you do return, please obviously make sure that your toilet is clean and empty. There is a fee of £75 for anyone who returns the toilet with any waste left in it. When you've done your toilet, simply close your hatch up, lock it again with your habitation key. Once it's all cleaned, simply come back in, open the hole on the, top, on, the, on the toilet, get one of your blue chemical sachets and simply pop that down inside the toilet. So at the rear of the vehicle you've got your adult size bunk beds. Take the ladder from the garage, make sure it's the ladder with the small heads, simply fit it there and you can get access to your top bunk. All of our bunk beds come with cargo nets, so if you've got young children they will simply hook up to the metal hook points and they'll keep them safe so they don't roll out. So now I'm going to show you how the electric drop down bed works inside the 707. In some cases you may find that you've got a very small silver key uh, on your key ring. If you do, there's a simple slot to put that in. If you don't have a silver key, you won't have this key slot here and you'll just use the up and down arrows as normal. Simply put the key in, turn it to the on position, press the down arrow and the bed will lower electronically. What you need to do is make sure you remove any cushions that can be unvelcroed so it's in the right position. Safely lower it down. Also remove the keys for when you finish bringing the bed down. Make sure you get your ladder from the garage. Hook your ladder on so it's nice and safe and sturdy. You can then climb onto that bed. When it's time to put the bed up, Remove the ladder, turn it on again, hold the up arrow and the bed will go back to daytime. Leave all your duvets and pillows up there, they'll be absolutely fine. Also under here, there is a black lever. When you pull that black lever, you'll be able to push down on the table when it's in the right position to lower the table to make the bed in this area here. To get the instructions for that bed, there's a handy pocket down here underneath where the fire extinguisher is kept and that gives you the full instructions of how to make this bed up. Okay, so we're now in the main lounge area of the 707. As you can see, there's plenty of seating. There are seat belts situated here behind the driver's seat. There's also two seat belts situated here facing forward behind the passenger seat. Lots of cupboard space, again, squeezy handles. Fill these with any bits and pieces that you may need to bring with you. You've got your main heating control panel just around the corner here which is situated under your television. You've also got your dining table. Now your dining table 
can remain like this for ease of access to move around the vehicle. It can also flip open to make the dining room table larger so that you can fit everybody around nice and comfortably. There's a grey lever under here, which you can pull, and it enables the table to slide around so that you can get it in the best possible position for everyone to sit around. All the windows in the vehicle, they all come with fly blinds and full blackout blinds. Now because the vent is down here on the inside of the vehicle, you'll see that there's a little sensor here. That sensor is indicating that this window is closed, so this will vent the carbon monoxide out. If you have your heating on and your heating doesn't work and you've had your window open during the day, make sure this window is fully sealed because if it isn't, your heating won't come on. Okay, so if you've chosen the option to take the bike rack on your holiday, this is what it will look like when you receive the vehicle. To work the bike rack, simply move these arms up, pull the rack down, and you can start to load your bikes on here. All of our bike racks take a maximum of four bikes. Once the wheels are in place on here and strapped in using these straps, you can then pull these levers down and strap in the main frame of the bike. Once they're all secured and on here, we do recommend that you bring your bike locks just to secure them. If you're stopping off somewhere to grab some food or into a service station, the last thing you want is your bikes going missing. So make sure you put your bike locks on. When you're ready to take your bikes off, simply move your arms up, fold it back up so these clips grip this part of the frame and fold these arms back down. This just makes the bike rack more streamlined when you're traveling around. Cause these are the best.